So I want to quickly start off this show with an apology. You know, that that's something that you should do on these shows once in a while. Let's start off with an apology. You know, we're only two episodes in now. Welcome to Cartridge and Quarters, a Pixel Play retro podcast. My name is Adam. Jin and Chris here with me. I'm CS Radical. I should also include that part. But yes, we have an apology to make. So on the last show, as it turns out, we said that Chrono Cross, the remaster, was not going to offer the original soundtrack. Instead, it was going to do a completely redone soundtrack. And as I've learned, nah, the soundtrack actually sounds pretty close to the original now. It seems like they just put out some extra songs. So I'm going to apologize for the fans that after the first episode of the show, we already completely made a pretty bad mistake. Who I'm not going to apologize for is Square, because apparently they need to be apologizing to us because the remaster is not that great. I have seen footage. It looks like a game that just came out on PlayStation in 2000, if not I, earlier. I, for research, I actually picked up the game and I can confirm everything you just said. <laughs> You know, I guess if you wanted to make a faithful presentation of a PlayStation original, you keep the 15 frames per second that it used to have in certain areas. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, except when that 15 frames per second is when you walk into a town, when the background shifts to change to the slight left, or the slight right, or you get into a battle, or you're in a battle, or you're leaving a battle. I'm it's starting to think that it's a bad port. Frames. It's... It's it has the exact same slowdowns as the PS1 version. I don't get it. So so basically I, that was like a disc. That was I assumed the issue. So basically they took the original, made it slightly shinier, fucked up the font because that's what Square loves to do is make the fonts look like crap now. Yeah, I don't know what's up with them in fonts. And then not much else. <laughs> no, I I actually spent probably an hour today I would change because there was three different um, settings. Well, sorry, there's three different video settings and then just graphics. Do you want the original or the remastered new version? I would like put it on the original graphics, put it on just normal video mode, which is the four by three, load it up, play the first 10 minutes in that first dungeon. Okay, quit out, change the to the next version where it's like widescreen, where they actually do, sorry, full screen, they call it, which is just. The four by three stretched, which is like, ah, uh, that's weird. Everybody got like bigger and wider. Serge, are you okay? <laughs> like, load that up for 10 minutes, play that a bit, exit back out, switch to the other video. I took screenshots. I was like in it. I'm like, I need to know like what is the best version of this. And it turns out none of them give me exactly what I want. <laughs> what version Not did one. you end up purchasing? I purchased the Switch version. Um, just because I like the screenshots and everything, I want to be able to take them. And if I'm going to play this, like I'm going to play it on the go, that's pro like on the, when on the go means on the couch. Yeah. Or in bed. Um, but I definitely will be picking up the PC version too. It's like probably during the steam summer sale or something. It seems that's like where that's going to be the direction. The yeah. Cause like, yeah, it seems like this is going to be the only way we're going to get a decent port. Like sure. Square might patch this thing to make it better, mm -hmm. but like. I don't think it's going to have the same amount of love that it would have if the fans were taking care of it. I mean, you look at some of the patches, not like cyberpunk was fixed long before it was officially done by, because yeah. fans tell with that stuff real quick. This is going to be a similar thing. I imagine like they're going to, somebody's going to come out there like what final fantasy nine did where they put a really nice like HQ mod. Somebody is oh, yeah. going to do the same thing for this game and also like fix all the other broken crap that goes on in it. And we're going to be sitting here being like square, You've had 25 plus years to do this and you couldn't do it. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. It's like, it's just the PS1 game. And it's weird because you know how like there'll be the black bars on the side. They actually put like a little filter there. It's like a slight blue hint that's kind of like, oh, it's a little lighter up here. And then it goes into like black down here. And I was like, why not put like nice artwork? If you're going to leave it like this, Put like some cool Chrono Cross artwork on the side or make it that you can pick and choose because this is very simple. I've seen lots of games do this where it's like a retro arcade game, but you get to pick whatever set of the black bars like, hey, here's some like cool side artwork. I mean, yeah. I think the Super Game Boy did that on SNES. You're asking for way too much from a company JPEG. that doesn't like that. As we <laughs> said last week, doesn't care about its retro stuff that brought it to the mainstream in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, I don't get it. Like, 
I, I also loaded up the old graphics. I'm like, right, maybe that'll be better. They did clean up a little bit, like even the backgrounds and stuff with the nicer graphics, but all they've done is kind of smoothed it. It's not like they actually upped the image. They just applied a filter to kind of get rid of the graininess. Yeah, it's but less it looks like it's like upscaled the... and like they changed the aspect ratio. It's just, we made it shinier and we're like, cool. Yeah. What yeah. what else? We made it yeah. shinier. All right, all right, in, Square, thanks. In certain scenes where it's you're in the dungeon or something and everything was that pre-rendered background and you were walking on it, it looks like your characters are standing on top of a piece of like, like a painting and they're running on the outside of a piece of paper because they look so crisp. And then the background you can tell is this just JPEG image just on the back. In towns and stuff, it's not so bad because there's so many moving assets that they have there. But you walk into a dungeon and there's no enemies on the screen. You're like, oh, that's weird. So the old graphics looks better there because at least everything just blurs together like crap. But yeah, it's it, it's interesting. I mean, I'm still enjoying it. Like as I was playing it, I started to not notice that stuff and just like go into battles. And I was like, ooh, I remember this. And then I also pulled out this. Ooh, and it's shining too. It's, oh yes, special edition cover from EB Games circa 1999 or 2000. I don't know. Whatever that, that, that's GameStop for people who don't trade on the stock market. Yes. This, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I was like, oh, I wonder, because I went on the Chrono Cross subreddit and everybody was posting two things, that and a clock that came with the original when you bought on PS1. Ooh. And I actually had that clock. I mean, it, this is, it was a really, it was like a piece of plastic, one battery. But I actually had that on my bedside for like years back in, you know, early 2000s. Um, and then I was like, oh, I wonder where that is. Couldn't find it. But I found the strategy guide and I was like, oh, I'm going to do it through this. I was like, maybe I will use the strategy guide. Take that, Google. I mean, <laughs> if, if I use the strategy guide, I might actually get stuff. Because the only thing that I, I, I don't even remember how to get the most powerful weapon in the game anymore. Like, that's how long it's been. So I, I would 100% need a guide in front of me to be like, hey, dipshit, oh, yeah. here's all the things that you don't remember. Yeah, it's like even in the first area, there's that pink dog you can get, like Pushol or Pashol. I don't even know how to say the name. Well, either way, you can get this pink dog and it's the first character you can actually recruit. Saw the dog, tried to talk to it, and it was like, I'm busy. And then there was the little girl and she's like, oh, if you get Pashol's favorite, her, his or her, I don't even remember if it was a boy or a girl dog, um, favorite food, like, oh, they'll join you. And I was like, okay, I remember this. There's something in my head where it's like, you got to find a bone or something. Searching around the town, randomly click on a bed, find the bone. I'm like, oh my God, I'm actually getting my first character in the way I remember. So I go talk to the dog. I'm busy. Leave me alone. I'm like, what is happening? It took me forever to remember. You have to hit like the Y button and it brings up items that you can use as like key items to use on people. It took me like 20 minutes. Just remember that. See, but... It's either that or we go to the current day like Assassin's Creed games where it has tool tips for you every five seconds. So oh, it depends on which way true. you want to go. This is better. This Some is people better. are like, you know, I'm kind of tired of all these things. And then they play the games that don't give them tips. And they're like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. it's funny because the game when it starts, it gives you just this screen of controls. And some of them are so friggin' weird because it's got like fast forward it's got um, like up, like put yourself to maximum health, I guess, or something. I don't know what the a battle up means. I have no idea. Um, and auto battle and slow down. I don't know why in a game that's already running at like 15 FPS, you'd be like, I, want, I need this to go slower and put it in slow motion. I'm doing like speed up because screw this. Um, and sometimes I'll do auto battle when I'm like, okay, like let's, how, do, how good does this run? Um, but the... There's so many, like, even if you want to go back to the main menu, you have to hold L1, R1, L2, R2, and hit start. And that's how you return to the main menu if you want to switch to, like, Radical Dreamers instead of Chrono Cross or change a setting. You want to change the graphics? You'd think you could do it on the fly and compare? No, you have to e save your game, exit out to the main menu, change, load back in. It's just. Well, yeah, it not... wasn't in the original, Chris. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and the HD Rumble? made my switch actually do a whining sound the eight the rumble is turned up to a thousand that whatever thing that spins in there was actually making a sound like an engine on a car i actually <laughs> thought my switch was broken i had to turn it off because it was just like like i get it i'm on an elevator but what a hideous sound and it was just like going crazy i guess all the other games have it turned up to like like just a little bit 
So it was either on or off. You can't even turn it down. Oh my goodness. I find with most games though, in general, Rumble, I just don't like very much. I don't mind Rumble if it's like subtle or it makes sense. Like Astro's Playroom on PS5 and that kind of stuff, like obviously. Um, but yeah, for this, it was just there for the sake of it. Like, oh, you're on an elevator. Oh, rumble. Yeah, I got it. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, the ground is slightly shaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something's like walking and it's like, it's, but it's like this small character. It's like, I don't get it. <laughs> Are they very heavy? <laughs> well, uh. you know, it's a shame. The first like major remastered release that we talk about on the show is mostly a dud. I mean, at some point we'll both play through it and. We'll be back here talking about, oh man, I forgot how good Chrono Cross is. We're not going to be sitting here talking about how great the port was. We'll just be saying how good the original no. was. That'll yeah, be about it's the it. original. If I really I mean, want you're basically to, paying. if I really want to, I could just pull out my original copy and play it on my PS2. Yes. It is can. possible. So there's always that. Or you can put your Xbox into developer mode and just put all the different emulators on there and play it on your TV. Probably in a higher quality because the emulation scene on games is usually insane with what fans are willing to do to their, you know, copies that where they put the ISO on and do all that kind of stuff. I think what you meant to say is legally purchase all the tools required and not do anything totally illegal. Correct? Actually, your Xbox has a disc. You can probably put it, the game in there and it runs through the emulator at up graphics, but you're still playing your original game. Ah, so I can play with RTX on, you're saying? Yes. Oh, that would be so weird, because this game was not just... And the game's so bright, I assume this, the whole thing would just be like a... Oh my gosh, like a Michael Bay explosion for Why, why am I? Why AI. am I suddenly playing, like, Lord of the Rings? What's happening? <laughs> I don't know what, what I can compare uh, Chrono Cross to. It's not really, not really something you can compare it to. No, no, not at all. No, absolutely not. Well... It's it's hard to say, like, every time that we see things get remastered or reported or repackaged, you always wonder, right, that, you know, they're going to do it justice, and we've seen it come and go, we've seen things go really, really well, we've seen things go really, really bad. Generally speaking, you would have figured that an emulated PlayStation game wouldn't be too hard. Yeah. yeah and, I mean, we see it over and over again when things just get ported, like, say, what Nintendo does with Virtual Console. Uh, we saw PlayStation do it for a while with uh ps2 on ps4 until they decided that it wasn't worthwhile anymore and then hopefully we'll see them start doing it again with the new playstation plus yeah do you when whenever a game is getting released that's an old old like game like not a remake just a straight up like remastering or just a report like a re-release do you ever worry these days because i think the track record that we're starting to see is giving me the vibes of like even old games aren't free of of really, really bad game development by lazy developers. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I definitely worry about it. Because you see these ports, and then, I, like, I was trying to think through this one as an example with the Chrono Cross, because it's like, all right, these were pre-rendered backgrounds. If they don't have the original assets or whatever, like, it probably is very hard to upscale that. Maybe. I don't know. Because then we see the fans on Steam with, like, Final Fantasy IX, and they up it, and it looks amazing. So maybe not. Um... But I also think, like, okay, is this very difficult to do? Is it not very difficult to do? Because you got the new character models. You know, what if you did go in and just design some new background images? You know, what if, like, how long would that take? How long did it originally take? Um, it seems like a lot of developers, especially Square Enix, um, and other ones for sure, like, you'll take any of them. It seems like they're taking the games. They're not really fixing any of the code. They add just new character sprites, which don't always look good. Because of like, you know, the, all the mobile versions of Final Fantasy 5 and 6 and stuff like that that were horrible. Um, they up the characters because it's probably the easiest thing to do. And then they might change some music, maybe. And they just make it available again now, but they leave all the bugs in. And it's almost like they're just cashing in. A part of me is still happy because, take Chrono Cross, there was no other way to play that for a long time. Like, if I, if I still, I probably do have my PlayStation 1 disc, but even if I do, I'd have to find a PS2 or PS1, because I don't even know if I have one anymore. And it would be a pain to try and go through, find it. Then you have the actual hookups, and I only have the HDMI, so I have to get another adapter and stuff. So for 26 Canadian dollars, or whatever it was, am I at least happy that it was, like, it's not a remaster, it's basically a port. 
Am I glad that this port is there for an emergency so I can play one of my favorite games? Yes. In a way, I'm very happy. But do I worry that, like, people like me who are willing to just buy a lazy port because they don't have access any other way to this anymore is probably making this worse? Yes. Because I bought Final Fantasy V and VI on Steam back when it was the very ugly graphics. I saw them going in, but I was like, how else right now am I going to play Final Fantasy V and VI unless I get them on my phone? Which was the same version anyways, it didn't really matter. Um, like legally, how would you get them, right? So, but, but I bought them and I, and I probably will keep doing this because I'm, I, I have this fear of missing out on some of my favorite games where I just want to play them again and hear the music. Because Chrono Cross is still great, I was loving it, but I mean those FMVs come up and they're in 240p or whatever the heck they're in. And even on the Switch's 720 screen, it looks blurry as fuck. I'm like, I can't tell what this is even about. What's going on? It was like a wave coming at Surge in the beginning. I'm like, that doesn't look like a wave. It looks like white dots just sprinkling on the screen and all of a sudden it's water. Like, I, I, yeah. I, need, to pl- I need to play this on a 4K TV with my PS5 and see what happens. Just, just to see the mess. Yeah, and by do. do that, I mean not. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Maybe one day it'll be a PlayStation Plus giveaway for a month or something i mean who knows it might be um we also have more remasters that we are aware of now uh rockstar and remedy or is it rockstar rockstar and remedy yeah Yeah, okay so i was was sitting there being like wait which one's wrong but either way max Payne one and two they're gonna get remasters now we don't know when but it seems like it's just like in in the beginning stages but remedy's gonna be the ones to do it so one and two three i'm surprised is like not even just being like re-released along with it maybe it's yeah, like, I was surprised by that it's too. It's old enough that I think you could do it, but mm-hmm. I mean, we're here talking about twenty years prior podcast. I don't even know if Max Payne original is technically twenty years, but let me actually quickly. That's got to be that. real close because it is like, PS2 era, so it's real close. I mean, it applies yeah. because we just talked to PS2 era in general. Um, yeah, it was. Oh yeah, it was released in July of t- two thousand one. So yeah, it's just over twenty years. Wow. Which would mean two can't be far behind it. Two is yeah, two thousand three. So, in another year and a half, it'll be twenty. It'll be considered technically retro too. So, wow, that's crazy. That's and crazy. like, it's weird. Like, I'm. It's great to see it, and then my brain stopped for a second and went, "Wait, you've never played the for the first two. <laughs> yeah, I've I've never played the first two at all. I've I've seen like all the different like videos of it and everybody talk about how cool it was just jumping around in bullet time and doing all the wacky shit. I did play and I did play three completely. I that that one I've oddly finished, but like I've never touched the original two just because like back in the PS2 days I played JRPGs and not much else, so you weren't gonna get catch me playing oh, yeah. playing uh, Max Payne. You maybe would have caught me playing GTA and that's about as far as I would have gotten that wasn't oh, j- Japanese. So. Yeah, that's is about exactly with the same. You and me were on the exact same level on PS2, JRPGs, Kingdom Hearts, maybe the odd 3D platformer if I just felt like a break, and then San Andreas GTA. That was that was it, and I don't even think I finished that. And I mean, it's even a game today with Max Payne that you could still play like regular because I believe there's still like PC releases. I'm sure uh, GOG has to have it. GOG would be the one that has it. I, I'm sure. assuming they would. And I mean, it's one of those games too that like, it's pretty easy. You can clean that up and it'll run just fine. You know, it's, it's a game that you could play today, but the fact they're going to give it like, I guess a shinier coat of paint is cool. Um, and in general, like this is probably something I might take a look at down the road too, because again, like I said, I've completely missed out on this one. And it looks like the kind mm. of game that I would like to play now because it's a shooter with something that's a little bit different. It's why, I mean, also, I guess it makes sense with Remedy being in charge of this now. Control is one of those very few shooters in the last like few years that i've gotten really into that you know do something different whereas most games it's just run crouch shoot snipe dive at like at worst or at best you get to do like a prone dive like call of duty does but like at least with max Payne, there is a bit of a differentiation compared to most games where obviously the bullets like the almost the matrix level bullet time stuff and yeah being able to do the crazy stunts like that's something that I'm surprised a lot more games still don't really do. Yeah, that's true. They kind of, like, there was Max Payne, and then that probably was a thing, PS2 era, where maybe they would try stuff like that. But yeah, there's no games in probably the last 10, 15 years, except for maybe Max Payne 3, where 
that's really happening where anybody's even trying anything. Everybody's stuck to this one formula of the, the call of duty first person shooter. And then the big thing is they add grappling hooks now to everything. Like that's, <laughs> it's that's funny you say change. that, but yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's either that or you know they just put perks so now you have a little bit more you mm. have like a special power up like it's overwatch now yes yes yeah but yeah i'm, I'm yeah. not gonna lie i'm actually pretty excited to potentially try this and, and worst case scenario if they say the port's bad oh well i'm sure i can pay five dollars and, and get, get the, the original. original copy and then just mess with that if i really wanted to 100%. so I saw a lot of people talking about it online where they were they were almost ready to start a petition where it's like Max Payne's weird squished face because it's like an image of a face like on top of the, like animation or whatever. Um, they're like, please at least keep a mode where you can turn his squished face back on. <laughs> like if they make it like a little more realistic with the, the actor and the character who played him, like please make squishy face an option again. And I mean, I would 100% play that. But I'm also on the same board with you. Like, I didn't play the first two. And I saw that. And I was like, hey, first remedy. So far, so good. You haven't hurt me. So I'm good with you doing this. And I never got a chance to play these. So like, yeah, let's let's give it a go. This would probably be a lot of fun. Because back then I would see Max Payne. I'm like, I'm never going to play that. Like when I was, you know, in 2002. Now I look at it. I'm like, I'd love to give that a try. So yeah, I'm definitely excited for that one. And they are building it specifically for PC, PS5, and, and Series X and S. So it, at the very least, it looks like they're going to use the best technology they can get. So I'm sure they're going to do their, their very best to keep that stuff 60 frames. I mean, with depending on how far they want to go graphically, you could probably even jump it up to 120 if you really wanted to. Because oh, yeah. that one's not going to demand nearly as much. So it's it seems like the kind of title that's going to be at least given the proper care, we would hope. I mean, it would be nice to see a Rockstar remaster, you know, not be a pile of broken shit. Yeah, if it was Rockstar doing this, I would have been so worried and upset because of just every comparative image I've seen of the definitive edition of the GTA trilogy. There's no way I would be like a picking up and playing Max Payne if it was Rockstar doing a definitive edition or remaster or remake or anything. Are you trying to say that you don't want a game where the rain looks like fucking light tubes? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> oh, I don't. Well, not if, unless that was the artistic style <laughs> originally. I don't want that to be added in randomly. You know, the the inner rock star corporate chill in me is thinking that you just don't like nice things. Ugh! Don't come at me with your rock star corporate chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 rock star corporate chill that totally exists in this body. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm trying to no. think though, like. How many games really use bullet time that well? I mean, games have tried to do it. I mean, obviously the Matrix games were were something that did it. But not a lot of games use slowdown. I mean, usually if you see slowdown, it's like a five to ten like ten second power up thing. Like we play Killing Floor 2 in our off hours, and that'll have it for a moment. But like to be used as like an actual kind of like a like a mechanic, I don't think a lot of games still do that, which is kind of surprising because no. it really makes some moments really cool. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. at the same time, I guess a big reason for it is that, you know, it's the kind of thing that can take away from the gameplay or, you know, if you use it too much, all of a sudden it's not nearly as cool. So if you use it in specific situations, it makes sense. And also they're not doing the crazy diving stuff that say Max Payne does. So it's really just everything slows down, which isn't that different. So, yeah, yeah. I see it like, well, obviously we'll see it a lot in like a sniper game situation like uh, Zombie Army or Sniper Elite or basically any game where you're a sniper and you shoot and get either a headshot or like a heart shot or something like that, it'll do like slow bullet time just to show how epic your shot was, but that's it. So it's very satisfying, but it's not like it's more of a mechanic. It's more just showing off a shot you did in normal real time. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. If, but either way, like I'm pretty stoked to see this get it. I think that's that's a game that a lot of people, especially a newer generation, hasn't really seen yet. Because Max Payne Three has also been a ways away. I think that's like early 2010s. So yeah, that's it's, yeah. It's definitely been a while since any of these games have come out, and it'd be nice for them to realize that Rockstar isn't just GTA Five. Yeah, I I know I that's know shocking to some people, but Rockstar <laughs> did make other games. Yeah, just not in the last nine years. Well, yeah. I guess, no, they did Red they Dead. They did Red Dead too. so I guess technically, <laughs> yeah, you know, Ro true. Rockstar back in the day used to move, you know, a mile a minute. Now they're moving, you know, a mile a decade, I guess. 
Yeah, I'd say a decade. Yeah, because yeah, it's been nine years that GTA Five is just releasing again. Because here we hear uh, it's it's the classic joke that you see like ten times on Reddit each day. GTA, there were three GTAs on one console, and now there's one GTA on three consoles. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 and the it's, it's the meme that doesn't go away. Every every day, I'm almost guaranteed to find it somewhere because somebody thinks it's still funny today. I don't yeah. know why. Because. Uh, I mean, it just keeps becoming relevant because GTA is like, hey, we're releasing on fridges. And then, like... oh, no, if, if somebody puts <laughs> it out when they show a, no, a new trailer for it, I'm like, OK, fine, that's topical. But on yeah. a random Wednesday, like three months after the last trailer they did for it, I'm like, guys, we, 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 we get the joke. We got it. Yeah. Find new memes. <laughs> have you seen reddit it's literally repost after repost that's all it is it is it is it's very tough going on reddit sometimes sometimes it's great and sometimes it's like oh gosh well consider considering the internet in general it's almost usually negative but hey can't always be that uh yeah. we'd always go back to the good old days where there was no internet and i actually just completely changed my mind that's a bad idea i, I like the yeah, internet internet's cool. kind of cool now that i think about it we should just make it for people who are very negative. They have to go back on dial-up. So they still have internet, but it's going to be a lot slower. And they can't just type and do everything they want right away. They have to actually like take their time. So by the time they're halfway into it, they're like, oh, I don't even want to post this. Dial-up internet on a computer that can only run Half-Life 2 at, at uh, 10 frames per second at best. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> That's... That, that almost sounds like execution at that point, you know? Yeah. I mean, this goes back to the bullet time thing. Is 10 frames per second kind of like slow bullet time? There, there you go. You're stuck in it the whole game. You're right. Chrono Cross isn't actually got problems. It's it's just a mechanic where they're slowing things down for you, the player. <laughs> yeah. They call it running bullet time, where you're just trying to run somewhere, but it goes slow to show how epic it is that you're trying to go left. Also, it's it's not something you can activate. It just decides when it wants to do it. And apparently it's a lot of the time. So you know. It is. It is a lot. I was surprised how much it was. I thought it was only going to be in battles. Nope. Go into a town. Go into an air, Go anywhere. It's just constant. Like, on, off, on, off. Crazy. So, we never got to have this conversation on the first episode because there was actually stuff to talk about. I know, it was shocking that mm -hmm. on the first episode of a retro podcast, there were actually some news stories to go through. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> so yeah. on a first episode, this would have made sense. But hey, second episode isn't too late. What first is episode the, part two. What is the <laughs> first game that you can remember playing? So the very first game I can remember playing, and this was even before I was a gamer, I would call it. It's just that my parents had picked up an NES for me and my sisters when we were young because it was like the hot item and... They, I get, you know, you have three kids and it's like everybody's talking about it, I guess, at school. Um, and we got the NES and it came with the Duck Hunt slash uh, Mario Brothers 1. The first game I remember playing was definitely Duck Hunt. I wasn't very good at it, like, normally. So I was young and just at the screen with it, like, right here. It was like, boom, ding, ding, ding. I was like, this game's easy. I like to shoot ducks. You know, pretty easy stuff when you cheat. Um, but I do remember playing that and then of course playing, um, Mario brothers as well, never getting far, never getting close to beating it. I would like get to the first warp, warp pipe, end up somewhere much harder and die and lose all my lives pretty much right away. And then have to start over. So I'd try it a couple times. I play the first two levels a lot and then I would just stop. It was almost like a demo for me. I, I remember the first time that I ended up playing duck Hunt at a friend's house because I never owned an NES growing up. I was always, I was the Genesis kid. That was my first console. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember thinking the light gun was so cool. And I'm like, man, technology is never going to get cooler than this. I can shoot stuff at my TV. And then of course we get to the point that we're now getting with VR where we both might own a, a PlayStation VR two someday. And yeah. we're going to be playing like the, the horizon VR game. We're going to be playing like some like, like third, like, or triple a, like, you know, Sony first party VR, like first person shooter game. That's going to be all over the bloody like place in terms of how unreal it is. And we're going to be sitting there being like, ah, hey, this reminds me just like Duck Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Technology didn't get better. It's still the same. <laughs> it's a, you know, event, I mean, wasn't there a game that was done that was almost like you playing Duck Hunt and then you getting sucked into like the game for real by like some like serial killer? I don't remember this, but that's probably something that exists. There, I remember seeing it. There, there was this VR game that people would play and it was like you 
it, it looked like it was just you playing like a retro light gun game and then it turned into like this horror game where a guy was actually stalking you from it within the video game and then got out and like attacked you in your house like nope. creepy shit like that <laughs> nope that's when the vr comes off <laughs> i'm like bye but like <laughs> duck hunt's one of those games too that like most people will remember um you know very fondly if you were old enough to do so i'm looking it up i think it's if it's the one i'm thinking of it's yeah it's called duck season it oh. is is a game where it's where it's like that where it's that where it's that horror vr thing it's that just it's terrifying. fucking weird i know it's it's specifically made too by like a part of a company that did um like a like a youtube channel that used to do like action videos all the time but i can't think of what their name was but it was something cool like that and i remember seeing that and being like I feel like I would rather just play Duck Hunt, honestly. <laughs> yeah, than that, yes. I would hook up the NES immediately. That I would do, 100%. It's funny that you mentioned you were the Genesis kid, because the first consoles I consider having, because this is when I actually became a gamer and it was about like me playing, it was a Sega Genesis and a Game Boy. Because um, I had a Game Gear, and it was horrible, and my parents returned it because it would die after, like, 15 minutes, and we couldn't tell if it was broken or not, but it turns out that's just Game Gear, game gear with batteries. Um, and they returned it to whatever store it was back then, and um, we got the Sega Genesis instead because for some reason they were also the same price at the time. And I actually remember getting Sonic 2 in the mail because there was a mail-in rebate. You got Sonic 1 with the system, but Sonic 2 had just released. You mailed in this coupon, and they mailed Sonic 2 to you. And I remember running to the mailbox, opening it, and there was the package that had Sonic 2 in it, and I, like, ran in and played it. And now then Sonic, again, is still over here because that was, like, forever. So, so like, out of breath, you're going, do, 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 do. <laughs> And then probably fell on my face, and then, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of crying. Yeah. At least, you know, five Band-Aids, a couple of kisses to make it better, and then finally got to go play some games. Worth it. Totally worth it. Totally um, worth it. For me, like the Sega Genesis is going to be my first game or first console. Um, there are a lot of things that people would have guessed is like my first game, and you'll never guess the one that I did first because it's it's completely random. It's Tommy Lasorda's baseball. Wow. Cause, this explains why you play so much MLB The Show. Yeah, that's probably part of it. <laughs> I mean, it may also be because I grew up playing baseball as a kid, so that might that might have been a part of it. You know, maybe yeah, my love for baseball bigger. comes from something. But yeah. that was the first one only because I think back in the day, like I think my dad just got it off a friend who didn't want it anymore. And, you know, he, if they were, they were going to buy me games, they weren't going to buy anything that they didn't have a fucking clue what it was. So they just saw, yeah. uh, they just saw Tommy Lasorda and they're like, I know who that is. He's a baseball player. That's going to be good for my kid. And you play the game and it kind of sucks. It's, it's not even close to like the, the best baseball game on the console. Like no. I can go back and play like world series baseball 94. You can go to the super Nintendo in that age and you can play games like Ken Griffey juniors, um, slug fest. You've got super batter up. If you want to go real, real, like no, no, like specialty stuff. There's so much more. And then Tommy Lasorda's baseball was like, Hey, let's have a really, really bad gameplay system with graphics that like the players look like, jelly beans that are like molding a little bit and like sticking out on the side like dang they 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 really didn't do the best job at making it making it look that great although you, you put a real baseball player's name to it like tommy lasorda and you're like well i don't know if they're gonna put try that hard but i guess because it was a launch title you got to accept it but yeah, yeah I, i've true. i've gone back and played it it is not even like in the top five games from like that era that I would even play that was baseball wise. <laughs> There's so wow. much else that you can be playing. That's better than that. So it's, it's one of those cases. It's weird how like a lot of the things that I'm really into, what the first things are that I ever played, like Tommy Lasorda's baseball is my first video game ever, which is not a really widely pan or widely remembered game. My first wrestling show I ever watched was WrestleMania nine, which is one of the worst wrestling shows they ever put on. Okay. So like, and I'm trying to think what my first anime might have been. It might have been Fooly Cooly. So never mind. Anime is cool. Anime is perfectly fine. <laughs> but like, it seems like most of the things I get really into, I usually pick the worst things to start with, and somehow I stick with it. So it prepares me for being a, a glutton for punishment. Well, I guess that makes sense. We're gamers. We are constantly getting punished for liking the things oh, yeah. that we like. Yeah. But uh, I mean, in terms of like the actual like first game that like I actually like played a bunch, that that would 100 percent have been Sonic Three. I, oh, I yeah. never own. 
actually it's a lie. I own two, but I think three was the one that like I really got into. And that's the one that like and I've and I've done a speed run of it on the YouTube channel for Pixel Play, which I believe is still there, so you guys can find it. You know, that's one of the very few games like as a kid I remember going back and playing and being like, holy shit, like I'm getting real good at this game. Yeah. And you realize, oh yeah, that's because it's all I've played for like a month and I keep playing the first two levels because after that I start sucking and of course you're going to get better at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, Angel Island. Oh, Sonic 3 was such a good game. So I played so much of that. I one day I was out with friends in like my mid 20s and I came home just obliterated drunk and um the person the girl I was living with at the time uh, she was out with her friends and she had messaged she's gonna be another couple hours because I guess I got home early and I was like all right what am I gonna do so I put on the Sega Genesis collection on uh, PS3 and I was like I'm gonna play Sonic 3 and I was like obliterated drunk I'm like oh how a thing blew through it in 45 minutes beat the final boss like went right beginning to end just destroyed the game probably the best I've ever done in my entire life and I probably hadn't even touched it in like 15 years, 10 years, who knows. But it's just like muscle memory, especially Sonic. There's just something about it. Well, maybe it's just 2D platformers, but like once you get good at it, it's just, yeah, it's all muscle memory. It's, well, it's like how there's so many things that like after a while you just pick up. Like I, you still remember like most of the codes for, for Sabin's Blitz uh, in Final Fantasy VI. Like you still mm -hmm. remember certain bosses and games, what their weaknesses are. There's still like secret areas that you remember, like for for God's sake, there like there are people that still remember cheat codes. Like people still know how to spawn tanks in GTA Three, like it's you know the side of their hand because it's yeah. just something you did so many times that it's hard to forget. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, like uh, Sega Genesis had Aladdin. I remember if you paused the game and it was A B B A A B B A. Skip to the next level. One time I couldn't beat one of the last levels. It was so hard. I was like, screw it. And I just started skipping through until I saw the credits. Is there, is there a code for like the Lion King where you can just skip the whole game and actually beat it? Mm, I don't know. That one I never owned because I played it at a friend's house. And I was like, this is so hard. I'm never, ever requesting this for my birthday or Christmas, which was how you got games back in the day. Yeah, like there's always that time where you go to a friend's place and they have like three games and you've already played like one of them to death. You don't really want to play it. So you got a choice of two, and you pick one, and it's the hardest fucking game ever because those that's how they were designed back then. They were designed so that they cost $80, and you don't feel ridiculous for buying it because you don't finish it in two hours. It takes you two years because it, it's intentionally meant to hurt you. You know, Ninja yeah. Gaiden would come to mind. Oh. But, I mean, even for um, for kids, like, I, am at, I remember the first time I went to a friend's house and tried to play Super Punch-Out, and it would whip my ass. Like, you get past Gabby J, and then after that, I was like, Wow, this is ridiculous. And then we all, like, at a birthday party, we all collectively were trying to beat it. And I think we got as far as the clown, the, the like, the oh. clown that's, like, bear, that looks like Bear Hugger, but it's just a reskin that makes him look like a clown. Yeah. And we couldn't fucking do it. Like, we tried, like, 20 times, and it just wasn't happening. Oh, and I've gone back and tried to play, like, the original Punch-Out, and there still are points in that game where I'm like, this is like Dark Souls. I like this, but I don't want to go through this because I hate dying yeah it hurts like it's fun and it's like oh i'm gonna keep trying and eventually you're like i don't want to keep trying i hate you you've ruined my day <laughs> well it's fun we were talking about how uh, remasters are bad like i think one of the best like i guess it's technically a remake in a way but like when punch out got redone for the wii i don't think i've ever seen a game that took its original so source material and like gave it that much care which by the way was done by canadians so that's why it was so goddamn good of course but like I I remember playing that and going, okay, this is taking everything that I remember from Punch Out and then just making it look like super fucking cool and funny and really charming and giving like oh, all yeah. these characters like so much more than just being, you know, oh this is this is the Indian guy, oh this is the Spanish guy, oh this is oh, the shit. Japanese guy. Now they gave them like like little extra quirks. They got voiceovers now, so you can get like little little tidbits out of it. Even like the way that they go down, like. There's all those little things about it. And that's the kind of stuff that we want to see with, with ports and stuff. You know, obviously yeah. not everything's going to get remade. But even if you take something that's already existent and just, just show that you care about it and you're not just trying to, you know, grab money out of, out of your customer base. Yeah. Like, that goes a long way. It's why there are certain ports out there that get brought up. And Punch-Out's one of them. I just, for the life of me, I'm just blanking on a bunch of them right now. But, like... 
there's so many games that get that treatment and they end up doing really well because nostalgia sells already. But if you also sell something that's in high quality, well, then it's really easy to sell to anybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you can take the concept and just give it a new modern game, but or or but like same concept, don't change what wasn't broken and just kind of, you know, up the experience a little bit. So like especially with the, that's a perfect example because I know it was the Wii and it was using some motion controls and everything and it worked really really well. I I love watching that game. I love playing that game. I mean, I haven't played it in a long time. I also love watching people play that game blindfolded because it's like, how the hell are you doing that? <laughs> so, so basically, you mean Zallard One doing it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because because <laughs> that guy is just a fucking machine. Mm -hmm. That that's I think that's the other thing too with like with SGDQ that I love so much is that it, it shows you games that you don't normally get to see done like with such skill. Because whenever you're used to seeing like you go on a Twitch stream and watch somebody play a game, like you'll watch the struggle. Yeah. Whereas you go, you watch like SGDQ or AGDQ and you get to see like games that you love just get absolutely broken. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like ridiculously broken. And it, it, it almost hurts your feelings seeing it because then it reminds you of just how bad of the game you are. And here's this person <laughs> who, yeah, they've probably played it like a thousand times more than you ever have, but it still hurts. Yeah, it hurts. You're like, man, I can't even beat this game, and here's this son of a bitch doing it in, like, a tenth of the time that most people finish it in? That's not fair. No. No, it's not. It's, it's not like, I love watching it, but also it's like, I've actually had it where I've picked up some games that I saw them speed run through, um, and then I try it myself, and I'm like, I can't beat the first level. Like, what the heck is happening? Why is this so hard? I just saw somebody beat this blindfolded wearing headphones, and they got through every level, and it was fine. Why am I struggling? There, there's yeah. still going to be a day that I finally try Hollow Knight, and I'm afraid to do so because I know it's going to kill me. I technically have Hollow Knight on almost every system except my Switch because it was a PlayStation Plus one. I think it's on Game Pass, and I own it on Steam. <laughs> but I haven't played it yet. I don't even know where I'd play it. Like, which location do I sit and try this game? So the last thing I wanted to talk about before we get to the end of our show here, uh, one more potential. It's not, it's not confirmed yet, but the trademark has been renewed by Square, of course, because Square likes to constantly bait their fans, uh, in Japan specifically for Tactics Over. Yeah. Which yeah. is another game that I haven't played, but I'm a big Tactics guy, so... You know, that would be a cool thing because I don't think we've seen a game since, like, I think PSP is the last one they brought it to. I think, yeah, that sounds right. PSP, yeah. Because originally, was it originally a PS1 game or were there ones before it? I remember them, I think there was, like, a Tactics Ogre 64 or there was talks of one. I don't know if it ever actually even ended up getting made. Oh, that's a good question. Was there one on like Super Nintendo? I almost feel like that was a there was like a Super Nintendo and then a PS One or something. Let's see here, because that's a series that I'm not 100 percent familiar with. So, let's see the original game. Yeah, Super Famicom, and then re released for PlayStation. It was also on Saturn, so it looks like a game that kind of got like redone over and over. Because yeah. it was officially on Super Famicom only in Japan in '95, then re released for Sega Saturn in '96. And then on PlayStation 97, and then we got it in 98. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, so, so technically, it's, it's, it debuted on three different consoles over the course of like three years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that sounds square, all right. But that's definitely a game that like, I mean, every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, that's tactics. <laughs> yeah, it's just tactics. There's, it's, there's it's, kind of no way around it. No. I'm assuming that... Um... Like, obviously, that game would have come out first. They probably had it come out. It probably did well. And I wonder if Square was like, wow, this this genre will do pretty well. Um, we Maybe we should apply this to our Final Fantasy series because that's so well known. It should have one of these. I well, wonder if that's actually how that came about. Here is the weird thing. So let me, let me pull up the Tactics Ogre Wikipedia again just so I can match up the dates because it's kind of strange how this came out for us. Mm -hmm. So... Officially, Tactics Over came out in 95, like I said. The PlayStation version came out September 25th, 1997. Which is interesting because in Japan, Final Fantasy Tactics came out in June of 1997. 
and then was released in America in January of 1998, four months before Tactics Ogre. Oh, it's so confusing. <laughs> Square has a real problem when it comes to naming things yes. and releasing things. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't call it like Final Fantasy Tactics over 35 over 2 first dream of the ogre Drew Kingdom Hearts. 2.8. Like so <laughs> 2.8. 8. 2.8. 8. Oh, good. Um, yeah. I'm still waiting for 2.9 Square. What the hell, man? Yeah, you went from 2.8 to 3. What, hap what happened to 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7? What the hell, guys? Actually, I think 2.5 actually does exist. Oh, yeah, doesn't 2.8 add something? 2.8, I think, 5? adds some of the PSP stuff, I think. Uh, okay. So they're like, that's point three of a game. They couldn't just call it Kingdom Hearts Complete Collection. You know, they, could, yeah, they right. couldn't do something like that. Or like the Kingdom Hearts uh, Pieces of Heart Collection. Or, you know, any anything else. Like, no, they had to go like... Final chapter prologue 2.8. <laughs> I think it's the actual... Okay, I gotta search this up now. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I, did, I, I had the words right, but the wrong order. It is officially Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. What the heck? That's so... That's so ridiculous. Why, Square? I don't even... Is that... Is all, are all the games on there? I don't even know. Is that like Final Fantasy... Is that Final Fantasy? I think... I think, I think it, well, 1? it's only 2.8, so there, clearly there's something missing. Yeah. Is is Kingdom Hearts 1 in there? Or do I have to get 1.5 and 2.8? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> My God. Uh, but I, I, I thought uh, it was cool to see the Tag Exogre is at least potentially making a comeback. It may not happen here. Mm -hmm. I mean, most stuff usually gets released here now. I mean, it's still crazy that Live Alive is going to be, or yeah, Live Alive is going to be coming to the States for the first time in like ever. Yeah. Because it's been around, it's been out for 30 years and it's getting like the Octopath yeah. Coat of Paint, which I think is so cool. Yeah, this is yeah because Square has these really good remasters where they're this two point five, you know, HD kind of like pixel aided graphics, you know, in the Octopath Traveler style. They're doing it with Dragon Quest three, I think it is, and then Live Alive, and no, I think actually just those two. Yeah, but like, that's fantastic. Like, I love that they're doing that for some of these games. And um, but then also they're the same people putting out Chrono Cross at 15 frames per second, where it's just like here's your PS1 game copy paste. So it's very hard to tell like what gets the love and what doesn't get the love. And it seems like everything that gets the love is the random games that I'm also very excited to play because I never got to play Live Alive because it wasn't here. Um, and I really really want to play it. Like I'm very excited for that one. It's on my wish list, but. Yeah, I don't know. There are a lot of games that I'd like to see re-release. Like I remember playing on emulator uh, Sick and Dead Setsu Three, which is like the third game in the in the Mana series. Yes, I think that did finally get a re-release. I think that's I think that might actually be what Trials of Mana is. Yeah, I think that's what Trials of Mana is. Trials of Mana is, but yeah, it's definitely like a remaster where they've redone basically the whole game from the ground up. But it's it's cool stuff like that, and I and I wish more games would get that treatment. I mean, at, off the top of my head, I'm like old old school Tales games would be nice to see come back. Yes, like Tales of Fantasia. Um, Secret of Evermore would be really cool to see come back. Secret of Evermore was such a cool concept and such a cool game. What's uh, Illusion of Gaia? I think is yeah, Illusion of Gaia is yeah. one. There's another one that I'm. I, you know what I would really like to see? I like to see Super Mario RPG make a comeback. That would be so, if that ever came back, I would lose my shit. That's one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and it's not like I've been able to get it out of my system. Because I can't, I think the last system I had it on was the Wii. And then Geno, Geno, still not in Smash, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just, well, it's, it's bullshit. I think Geno's in, like, he, he's got Trophies a Mii don't costume. Count. No, there's a Mii costume, I think. Still doesn't him. count. Yeah, no, it doesn't count. It's like they're almost like, hey, just quick little fuck Until you. Until you, you can <laughs> shoot rocket hands at people, it doesn't count. Where the stars come out when it hits. Aww. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh. so all our topics are done. So unless we want to ramble off about Square being mean to us over and over again, would be the entire show. I swear to God, yeah. we won't talk about this every single episode, no, but we might talk about it every episode. Yeah, just the first sixty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I would like to play a game with you, Chris. Yeah, here we go. Time it's to not, fail. It's not going to be the same game though. What? Oh, <laughs> can't even practice. All right. <laughs> no, this is going to be a different game. And it's going to be in the style of the who am I questions. Oh. So I'm going to give you four clues, getting easier and easier as we go, and it's going to be the name of a game. 
Name of a game. Okay. So the first clue, and you will, and you along at home can play along. But you're wrong. And eh. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> so I am a game that has been released four separate occasions, not counting digital re-releases, digital only re-releases, I should say. So physically, I have been re re-released, or I've been released four times physically. I can't think of almost any game that's done that. That's why I got to go hard to start with. Holy. I'll, I... I'll, I'll add one to the clue just so that it's not completely ridiculous. So I okay. am a game that has been released four separate times. Uh, the last time I was released, it was for the Game Boy Advance. Oh. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm going to go with Sonic 1. No, that is incorrect. Okay. All right. Clue number two. In my game... You have the choice of four playable characters with several bosses. Although if you speed through the game with all the secrets as much as possible, you can only do two bosses in the entire game. Metroid one. No. Four four playable characters? Why did I why did I say that? <laughs> ah. I went with the bosses thing and I completely ignored the first part of oh, dang it. Alright, that's me. Alright, now it starts getting a lot easier. Okay. You may also know me by my alternate name, Yume Kojo, Doki Doki Panic. Oh, is this Super Mario Brothers 2? Yes. Ah, uh, four playable characters. Dang it! The last clue would have been, I am most known in the West by being a game that was released by a Japanese developer who thought the actual version that would have been the sequel to its original game was too hard. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Japan thinks we're dumb. That's also yeah, why we did not see Final Fantasy 2, 3, and 5 when we were supposed to. Yeah. Oh. There, there are some interesting facts about the early days of gaming when it comes to Japan re-releasing games to us. Because here's another crazy story. We know Final Fantasy is having 1, and then 2, which was 4, and then 3, which was 6. I, ha- I need yeah. two hands for this. You 6. Need two you know what Europe's first game was in the Final Fantasy series? Uh, four, I guess. Like Mystic Quest. What? The first ever Final Fantasy game released in Europe, if I remember correctly, is Mystic Quest. That is the first definitely numbered the Final Fantasy they ever got was seven. What? Oh no wonder everybody in Europe loves Final Fantasy seven <laughs> so much. They didn't know any better. It was like Mystic Quest and then that. Don't be wrong, I actually loved Mystic Quest, but I also knew it as, like, the crap game. I loved it just for different reasons. A lot of people shit on Mystic Quest, which I get it because it's not hard. No. You you literally hold A and win. But somebody tell me I'm wrong on this. I think Mystic Quest has the best battle theme of any Final Fantasy game. Yes! There's a metal version of it on Spotify that I listen to all the time. It was on my workout playlist. It was so good. It's probably, um, it's probably, uh, gay metal. Yeah, prob- that could be it. It's probably Johnny Atma that does it. Yeah. Either that, who else does it that I know? I'm thinking, um, there's also, it might not be him, but there's, there's other really good game music. Like, we'll, 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 we'll talk about retro music at some point. Otherwise, yeah. uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's uh, F-E-R-D-K, like Ferdy K, something like that. Okay. And he does, and he does a lot of obscure stuff too. He did one for Ease 6, Ark of Napishtim, which threw me the fuck off. And I'm like, I, I love this song. I can't high five you. There's a screen in the way, but god damn. <laughs> Stuff like that. Like I love I mean, obviously I love anybody that does retro game covers. Like you get into family jewels territory and stuff like that. Like Oh yeah, yeah. Like they're all great. I love the ones though that go way off the beaten path. Yeah. Because once in a blue moon you're like, I have no idea what game this is. And then you turn it on, I'm like, I don't know what game this is, but god damn that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, gaming music is so good. We'll definitely have an episode where we just talk about retro game music for sure. And it'll be, it'll be mostly the Chrono Cross soundtrack. Because it, it'll give us a chance to, to bash Square some more, you know? Because that's what we yeah. do on this show. <laughs> that's what we do. The Bashing Square podcast where we bash Square, but also Square sponsors, please. Well, this has been uh, <laughs> Bash Square and Quarters. Thank you for joining us. But yeah, this has been Cartridge and Quarters. Episode two is in the books. Thank you so much for checking us out. In the words of our great master, Kalen. 
hope it was good for you. We enjoyed it too. Uh, if you guys enjoy this podcast, whether you're listening to us on any video or audio service, obviously, if you can give us a like, please do so. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Searching Pixel Play Podcast on YouTube. You can find us at most places you find your audio podcast, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, where video is now a thing too. Think That's awesome, by the way. Yeah, uh, that is awesome. Google Podcasts and many, many more. And you can also check out our link tree. Link tree is Pixel Play Podcast or Pixel Play Cast. I can't remember. And it's usually, I just realized up until now, it used to be on the video screen. And Streamlabs has this lovely thing of doing where it takes a cloud image and puts it over top of the original. So I need to now reimpose the actual image that's supposed to go here because it has the link at the bottom, specifically because I don't remember what the code is. But hey, it is what it is. It's either Pixel Play Cast or Podcast. I can only go so far on this. I can't like suddenly be like, it's actually Pixel Pod Play. Yeah, that would, <laughs> that would be very confusing. That would be very confusing. But yeah, thank you so much for checking out the show, guys. We will be back on, well, I guess next Saturday at 10 a.m. like we always are. And then obviously the Pixel Play Podcast, normally Tuesdays at noon, Wednesdays at noon. Oh my God, this is... Wednesdays, yeah. This, you guys this, are on live Wednesdays. It's because we record, live. record Tuesdays. I'm glad I didn't say Thursday when we said we released this thing. <laughs> no, no. Saturday morning, 10 a.m. That was also the thing with the Chrono Cross story is that we literally recorded and then a day later the story came out that actually it wasn't what the soundtrack was supposed... Like it was just the original soundtrack was fine. And we were all like, great, that would have been nice to know when you miscommunicated that the day before. Oh yeah, that was a huge miscommunication on their part. Well... You know, I can't even get the date straight, so who am I to complain about miscommunication? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but yeah, Pix I said see, I said Pixel Play Podcast. You almost, you this is did it. this is gonna keep going. This is gonna be a running trick. Can I get through an entire episode without saying the wrong thing? The answer is probably not. No, no, you can't. Which so is fine. For cartridge and quarters, episode two, we thank you one last time because I'm A terrible at ending things and B terrible at saying them correctly. So both just end up being a double whammy. And we will see you on the next episode where, yeah, let's be honest, we're probably going to keep bashing square because that's what we do. This is true. Yep. Have a good night. Have a good afternoon. Have a good day, wherever you may be. We'll see you on the next one. Take care for now. Cheers.